Hey guys, there's our learning target. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with the Pythagorean theorem in this video and simplifying some radicals. So first things first, you've got to know your perfect squares. So of course one is a perfect square, it's not listed here uh, because we won't be using it for simplifying purposes. But uh, so perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, 25, 36 and so on and so forth. If you ever forget uh, your perfect squares, you can always derive them by just um, by going through each number and multiplying it by, by itself. So for example, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 25, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, and so on and so forth. So you got to know your perfect squares. The reason you have to know your perfect squares is because we use perfect squares to simplify radicals. So let's begin by simplifying radical 72. The first step is to find the largest perfect square that goes into the radicand. So the radicand is whatever's under the radical. In this case, that's 72. So let's go back to our list. What's the largest perfect square that goes into 72? So if you're good with numbers, you know that 4 goes into 72. However, though, there is another number that's also a perfect square bigger than 4 that goes into 72 and that's 36 and you want to use the biggest one because if you use the biggest one it just means you're going to be doing less steps and it just looks less messy that way I'll show you how to do it with 4 in a second but I want to show you first that it's best that you take the biggest perfect square that goes into the radicand so we're gonna use uh, that perfect square we just got which is 36 uh, first, I'm going to write two radical signs like that with a multiplication in between. So I'm going to use that 36, and this is step two here, to factor the, the radicand. So 36 multiplied by what is equal to 72? Well, that's 36 times 2. So that was step two. Use the perfect square to factor the radicand. Or factor the radicand using the perfect square that you got from your list. Step three, take the square root of the perfect square and bring down the radical, then you're done. So take the square root of 36, that's 6, not radical 6, the square root of 36 is 6, not radical 6, and then just bring down the radical, and you're done. This is the final answer, 6 radical 72. And one way that you can check your answer is by using the calculator to to make sure that that radical 72 and 6 radical 2 have equivalent decimals so let's go ahead and do that now let me just pull out my calculator okay there's my calculator so radical 72 is that 8.48 so on and so forth and then 6 radical 2 is whoops is the same. So what you can tell from this is that radical 72 and 6 radical 2 are equivalent expressions. That's really all that tells you. Okay now suppose we used 4. Suppose I didn't want to use these steps here and you used 4 to factor. You can still get the radical in simplest form that way it just means you're going to do it in more steps because now you're going to have to do 4 times uh, 72 divided by 4 what's that get the calculator 72 over 4 is 18 so then now radical 4 becomes 2 you get 2 radical 18 and you'll say, oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm done. No, you're not done. Even though these are equivalent expressions, you're not done because radical 18 could still be simplified. So you have to break this down even further. And that's going to be broken down with radical 9 times radical 2. So now you got 2 times 3 radical 2. The 3 comes from the radical 9. And you get 6 radical 2 again. So again, I just say that to say, look, it's best if you just use the biggest perfect square. To simplify the radical. Okay, uh, here's our first example. 
find the length of the missing side in simplest radical form. So this is our basic Pythagorean theorem question. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I know this is just a review for you guys. That's why I'm going through it uh, a little quick. Remember, c is always the hypotenuse. Then the legs are a and b. So let's substitute into our formula. We get 5 squared plus b squared equals 7 squared. That's going to be 25 plus b squared equals 49. Subtract 25 from both sides because we want to get b by itself. So we get b squared equals 49 minus 25, and that's going to be 24. Square root both sides. So b is equal to the square root of 24. However, though, remember, your answer has to be in simplest radical form. So we want to break down radical 24. So radical 24, if we want to break that down, the biggest perfect square that goes into that is 4. So we'll use 4 to factor it. So radical 4 times radical 6 is equivalent to radical 24. Radical 4 becomes 2. Bring down the radicals, we get 2 radical 6. So b is equivalent to 2 radical 6 in simplest form. That's our final answer. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. I hope this helps. Take care.